Do you so, want to be submissive? You want to prefer 50-50 in a relationship? I think we had Wendy answer. Uh, what about you? Um, I think it just depends on the relationship, like the person. Like if the guy's okay with being submissive and the girl wants to be dominant, okay. If the girl wants to be submissive, that's fine too. It kind of just depends on what each of them want, what the relationship looks like. Which do you prefer? Yeah, what do you prefer? 50-50. You like 50-50? Yeah. You, yeah. don't, you don't want like a strong boyfriend who wants to lead and you can follow him? I mean, him? I want a strong boyfriend, but like I want to be able to have the opportunity to push back a little bit if my opinion differs. Like if I want something different and it's important to me, I don't want a boyfriend that's just going to be like, oh no. You don't want a tyrant? Yeah. I don't want someone that's just going to tell me everything to do because, I don't know, I have my own opinions with everything. So yeah. here's the the biblical idea, the biblical picture of dominance and submission. This is a loving dominance, okay? The, the example is Christ. Ephes Ephesians chapter 5, you can go read it later. Um, but it says that husbands should love their wives as Christ loved the church. How did Christ love the church? He laid down his life for the church. If you're not you know, dating or married to a man that is not willing to lay down his life for you, that's really not a man you should be with. And, and then obviously if you, as you keep going, it says that the wife should submit to the husband. You know, the church doesn't submit to Christ. The, I'm sorry, Christ doesn't submit to the church. The church submits to Christ, just as, uh, you know, the husband-wife relationship relates to Christ and the church, the husband picturing Christ, the wife picturing the church. So, yeah, love is the key word there. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a loving dominance. And right? Chase, if I recall, I think you've said that you, you don't, in your relationship, you don't want to be a tyrant. Yes. Like, you obviously want to be with an intelligent woman, and you would want, you'd be certainly open to hearing what she has to say, but I think... And perhaps you can phrase it, you know, I don't want to put I mean, words it's, in your it's, mouth. It's, but. It's, it's like this, bro. Like, you know, I look at it from the perspective of raising a family, right? Creating a family. As a man, for me to create a family and bring a family into this world, I am ulti ultimately responsible for everything that happens to it, right? Like, I, I am the, the commander, the captain of the ship. Whatever happens to the ship, that's on me, right? And I'm willing to take that responsibility. Now, with that said, I want a good wife that I can partner with. I don't want a wife who's like stupid or who isn't going to have valuable input. Like obviously I'm going to disagree with her on things. There's no question about that. But I want the kind of woman whose counsel I trust. And if our perspectives differ and we're married, I will expect her, even if she doesn't understand where I'm coming from, I will expect her to ultimately submit to what it is that I need her or the family to do while trusting that it's in ultimately the best interests of the family. Like, I don't want to control her. Well, yeah. I guess that that's where I differ. Like, if you guys have opposing opinions, like, that doesn't mean that all the time she needs to be submissive to you. Yeah, I mean, she's, she's totally allowed to disagree, and because I love her, I'm going to listen to what it is that she has to say. Well, what if, like, what she had was super intelligent, blah, 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 and you guys were arguing, and she brought up, like, a really good point. Would you... I mean, if, if I'm if I'm wrong about something and she brings up a good point and proves to me that I'm wrong, like I, I would have the humility to be like, OK, you got me on this one. Great okay. job. Thank you for telling me that. But you that know? doesn't that lead to your trust in her counsel? It does. It does. Exactly. Right? Like that's Absolutely. why you would trust mm -hmm. that she's the woman for you because you would trust that that's why you're with her. Absolutely. Because it, I, I have, have the ability. Yeah. I, so I have a, I have a perfect example. Have you guys seen the movie 300? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right, so in the opening scenes of 300, King Leonidas, there's a messenger from the Persian army that comes to King Leonidas, right? He comes to Sparta, and he basically tells the Spartans, he's like, yo, you guys need to submit to us or we're going to kill all of you, okay? And so they're having this conversation, and King Leonidas is there with his queen. And as they're having this conversation, as they're having this conversation, uh, King Leonidas realizes that he needs to kill this man. But before he kills this man, he looks back at his wife because it's a massive decision to kill this man. If he kills this messenger from the Persians, the entire Persian army of millions of men is going to descend on Sparta and, and attempt to kill everyone. It's a big decision. So he looks back at his queen for her counsel because he knows he needs to kill this guy. 
and she just nods her head and like in that moment he knows like okay like my wife has got me on this this is the right decision like and then he you know he yells this is sparta and he kicks the dude into into the hole and then they kill everybody like you want I feel like this as a man. Is yes, I had, it ready. I had it ready to go. Like as a, as a man, like I want a woman whose counsel I can trust. You know, like I want a woman who who is intelligent, who can see things. And if if the thing is like with leadership, you have to be humble. You need humility because if you're a leader and you're wrong about something, you have to know that you're wrong. You know, like if I'm going to lead my family in a certain direction and I'm accidentally going to lead them off a cliff. I want to know that I'm going to do that. And if my wife tells me that and she can explain it to me and she can help me see that, like I'm going to, I'm going to have the humility to be like, Oh yeah, you're right. And I, I want the kind of woman that can do that. But if she's wrong about something and I know damn well that she's wrong about it, I'm going to expect her, even if she doesn't agree with me, I'm going to expect her to listen to what it is that I have to say because she trusts that I have her best interests at heart. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, wait, so Caitlin, here, let me give a scenario. Um, mm -hmm. Let's say you've been dating a guy, mm -hmm. dating a guy, right, mm -hmm. for a couple months, and you're like, hey, what do you want to eat? And he's like, oh, I don't know, you just, whatever you want. Is that turn off or, because I feel like I hear from a lot of women, they want like the guy who's decisive, who's like, I want Mexican tonight. <laughs> I want hamburgers. I want sushi. I mean, if it was like all the time and I never got to pick where to eat and it was just always what he wanted and like, sure, then I wouldn't like it. But if he was like, like again, 50, 50, like half the time, oh, like, what do you want? And then half the time he's telling me what he wants. What are you getting for dinner tonight? Oh, uh, I kind of want Chick-fil-A. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can I add to that? Yeah. So here's my issue with it is. If I say like, okay, I make the final decision, we're having Mexican tonight, and then it's awful or it's bad service or something, no. then it comes back. I hate when it, the guy is then like, well, we shouldn't have done that because it was a horrible idea, or, or then yeah, speak up. Yeah, it's still up. on him. Then speak up. Because yeah, it, it's still if on you him. didn't want to go for Mexican, then say something, right. but that's what we're like. He submitted to your decision, but ultimately it was still his decision, right? right? And then they so turn around and they blame you. He can't blame he's you. like, what the heck? It was his decision. <laughs> right? Yeah. So it's like, it's like in uh, the book of Genesis, after Adam and Eve eat the fruit, God, God comes to them and he's like, what have you done? And Adam goes, it was the woman. Like she, <laughs> she, she said we should do it. How dare. Right. I just, I want to say too, to what we were saying, I think it's good for a, a woman to want a man who can lead, who cares about what it is that she cares about, right? Yeah. There's a distinction there between a tyrant versus having a loving king, boyfriend, or husband, right? Because if you're with a good man, he's going to care about what you care about. That doesn't mean he's always going to listen in terms of like, yeah, we're going to do that. But a good man is going to at least care, mm -hmm. right? A man who doesn't really care about you that much, he's going to be like, no, screw what you have to say. Like, I'm not listening. There's a difference there. Would you say there's some type of a comparison there almost to the way that like children need to submit to their parents, right? It's like, I mean, sure, sometimes you can have shitty parents and when you listen to them and they make all of the decisions on your behalf, that could lead to a terrible life if they're terrible parents. But if they're good parents and you trust in yes. their judgment, it's ultimately gonna lead to the best outcome for you. I yes. mean, I guess like I grew up with pretty shitty parents. Right, so maybe it's hard. So I was always independent and like on my own and like making my own decisions. And for me, it was kind of like, like I was kind of like the leader helper of the family, I guess, like even with my brothers. Yeah. So I feel like I would have a really hard time if, or like one, putting my trust in a guy because mm -hmm. I've had a lot of guys hurt me but also being submissive to someone else, like after me being like dominant for myself mm -hmm. all these years, like I, I just don't know if I could go fully submissive. Like I feel like for me, it would always have to be 50-50. You, you know, so I've met, I've met and talked to a lot of girls that have had daddy issues and who fundamentally find it hard to trust the judgment of a man yeah. because they were taught in life that the man that was supposed to love them most didn't love them exactly. and didn't have their interests at heart. I believe that if and when you choose to heal that, and it'll take time, but like for you to heal that wound from your dad and to realize like he failed at his job, 
I believe that you would you would find it easier to trust a man. I feel like I should also just keep my independence because I feel like that's what makes me who I am and it makes me strong. It makes me successful with things in my life. But do you feel like so, it's a little bit of an armor sometimes? I mean, yeah, I do put up an armor, yeah, but yeah. do I want to like be making decisions for myself? Even if it's like I have somebody else. Mm-hmm. Do I want to be the person like equal 50 50 in decisions? Yeah. There's I never this, want someone to take that from me. There's this saying that like unknown heavens are like scarier to people than known hells. Yeah. Wow. And I think mm-hmm. that oftentimes for people, especially when they've experienced childhood trauma, especially mm-hmm. stuff with their upbringing, like that bleeds into your adulthood so much. But oh, it does. That just because your armor has served you for this part of your life like i would just encourage you to think that like maybe like what are you also giving up in pursuit of keeping that armor on at the same time it's just something to consider if you find i'll I'll tell you this just to wrap this point if you find a really good guy who loves you and he's strong and he's masculine and you can you can actually trust his judgment if you keep that armor up and you keep like pushing away his loving leadership that is the kind of thing that can ultimately push away a really good man well i'd say with 50 50 it wouldn't be like me pushing away his leadership it would be like me welcoming it in but also him welcoming like welcoming mine like just our opinions like that's it like not one person's a leader over the other kind of like you both are going together i don't know that's just you you, you may find a guy who wants exactly that i hope so either way it's not ideal uh, okay. it's, it's not right, I would say. Uh, I, I think I think going by our feelings is, you know, how we got this nation all jacked up in the first place. We Facts. Need to, we need to start going off the word of God, not just our feelings. Facts. If we make morals subjective or relative, you could say, to our own feelings and our own desires, this destroys any moral claim that you can make. It makes your worldview concerning morals totally absurd. Because if you say, okay... Morals are, you know, just what I feel is right. Okay, now you've subjectivized morality. And now we have dudes in women's bathrooms. And you can't object to that. You can't say, oh, that's wrong, because you've already subjectivized morality. He's just doing what's right in his own eyes. You can't look at a a rape or a a mall shooting and say, oh, that's wrong. No, you've already subjectivized morality. He's just doing what's right in his own eyes. But from the Christian worldview, we start with God's word and the objective standard of his word. We say, this is God's design. This is right because he says so, and we start there instead of starting with our own feelings and our own reasoning. Mm. I think, honestly, it'll just take the right man we're submitting to, and I think that's the biggest point here is, like, for a man, they want a confidant, a woman who they can lean on their counsel, but for the woman, they also need a man who they can trust and default to their leadership to. And I think that's what it's going to take for you is meeting a man like that, but I would just caution you to be a little bit worried because that armor that you're wearing now could prevent you from ever meeting him. It's very wise. Vacation. Are you selectively 50-50, though? Like, for example, when it comes to courtship, uh, do you ask guys out? Do you take initiative? Do you go for the first kiss? Yeah. Yeah? Yes. You go for the first kiss? You go for the first kiss? Yes. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. Well, I mean, why not? If I okay. like a that's guy... Fi- no, that's fine. You that's said fine. you're on birth control? Yes. I wonder if your preferences would change after coming off. I well, mean, I'm I- on birth control, <laughs> and that's not happening. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, but uh, I usually sometimes when there's like a party and I like a guy, I go up to him. I got a question about the 50-50 thing. You want to have kids? I don't know yet. You don't Depends know Depends on if I find the right guy. Okay, say you found the right guy. Um, then yeah. Yeah? If I were financially Wait, can you stable. Straighten, your straighten up? If, if I were financially stable, everything like was aligned to have kids, yeah, I would want kids. Would you want to just continue working through your pregnancy and then after having the kids? Or would you want him to provide for you I so you feel can focus like, on motherhood? I feel like it depends. If I have a really good job and I make more money financially than he does, then I would want to keep working. Yeah. Despite the stresses of pregnancy and motherhood? Yes. I'm calling Cap. We'll check back in 10 years. <laughs> in 10. Okay. Right, we'll, 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 yeah, we'll uh, put it on the calendar. Um, what, what about you? Um, so if I could find somebody that I trusted... Who doesn't um, go to jail. Right. <laughs> yeah. So if I found a really good guy and I trusted him and he was intelligent and I would I would love to be able to, to be submissive. I would like that. With your last boyfriend, I th- is that the one that was in 
that went to prison? Is that your last boyfriend? No. Or? That was maybe your previous one. Were you submissive to him? Um, I tried to be, and then he proved over and over again to be extremely more dangerous. of like. <laughs> um, no, not that's the that's the one that was in prison. The last one I was with was the one that like had the job, moved in, lost the job, and then was going to do the travel job, and then was just in my apartment all the time. Um, anyways, he just he was not dominant at all. I felt like I had to take on the dominant role and that was kind of a, bu- a little bit of a bummer to me. I was looking forward to either being 50-50 or getting to have somebody who was more of like a leader. A real man, so to speak. Yeah, I guess, yeah. 